Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and welcome back to another episode of our webinar series. I'm Nurman Adam. And I'm Hakim Ahari. And for today's episode, we have a very special topic, which is the roles of peer psychosocial support. Uh, so for today's guest, uh, we have a very special guest. She is very charming, very intelligent, someone that I know. She is also the president of the Saista uh, Saista uh, Society, and she is the one and only Sister Wafa Wale. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, Nukman. You speak highly, so highly of me, and I'm shy now. <laughs> All right, so hi everyone. Allow me to introduce myself once again. I'm Wafa Wale. Um, the chairperson of Secretariat of Psychology, and yes, no mind pronounce it right, Sexta, in short. Okay. Okay, thank you, Sister Wafa. So, uh, so this webinar series is about peer psychosocial support. So, uh, we actually wanted to interview you for a few questions regarding the psychosocial program, since you are the head of the psychology students in IOM. So uh, can we already start you with the first question? Shoot it. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay, since you have been involved for quite some time with the peer psychosocial support as the person in charge, because you know you are the head of the psychology department. Uh, so can you tell, <laughs> psychology society, so can you tell us more about this initiative and its goal? Like, when was it established? What was the purpose of the establishment? And is there anything that students should know? Because I believe, I believe, there's like a, still a number of students who are still quite new to the peer psychosocial support. So, all right. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Nukman, for the question. All right. Um, actually, I only started to become the person in charge for peer psychosocial support was actually last semester. So before this, it was Sister Ayman who was the previous vice chairperson of Secretary of Psychology. All right, so um, ever since last semester, which is the current semester actually, uh, I started to become the program manager and will be passing down to another program manager for the upcoming semester. All right, so let me briefly tell you what is peer psychosocial support actually. So um, peer psychosocial support has been going on for about four semesters now. And inshallah, we'll be continuing our initiative. Um, it is an initiative by the Secretariat of Psychology uh, and in collaboration with um, our kuliah, Ahas KIPHS, um, PSU, and also IMPACT. So let's start with the brief introduction of what peer psychosocial support is about. So basically, it is about a um, volunteer-run volunteer program which aims to create a supportive environment for promoting the mental health needs and well-being of students in Ahas KHS. So what we do is that um, we provide a safe space uh, for students to come to us and talk about their concerns and etc. And it is beneficial for both the students as well as the volunteer. So as for the volunteer part, we basically um, conduct a training session every semester. And it's not just one time, um, one time uh, training session. It's actually multiple training sessions being conducted every semester to ensure that um, our volunteers are ready to conduct um, the session with the students because they are things that you can say and you cannot say. There are things that you can do and you cannot do during, um, during the session with the students. So um, all, in short, um, peer psychosocial is about providing a safe space for students. Um, started with psychology students at first, it was just psychology students. And then we open it to Ahaskaya KHS, which is from other departments juga. So, um, um, the students from Ahas KHS um, can register to us to book a session with us and it will be one-to-one -one session between the uh, volunteer and the student. And the volunteers, um, talking about the training session, right? So the volunteers are trained by clinical and counselling psychologists from PSU and IMPACT. Hence, it's our collaboration lah dengan uh, PSU and IMPACT so that um, our volunteers um, become 
well-informed and non-judgmental listeners when it comes to listening to other people's problem. Can. And also, um, the collaboration with PSU and IMPACT, if um, there are students with a serious case of issues, we transfer them to PSU and IMPACT. So if um, the issue is quite serious, we, we do not handle that case because um, we believe that um, we are not um, certified, what do you call it? certified um, psychologists to handle this case, right? We are just, um, we can provide empathy listening session. So um, if the, they, are, they are concerned, um, and issues relate to um, a serious type of mental issue, like suicidal thoughts, um, lead to upper, um, eating disorder, things like that, we transfer them to PSU and impact, hence our collaboration with them. Lah. Okay, um, and then started with last semester, uh, which is the current semester, lah. Um, we did some improvement. Um, we started on providing educational content juga on how to take care of our mental health. So hence, um, we have three vision and mission, which is one of us to spread uh, mental health awareness um, and try to break the stigmas of mental health. And then second, to provide a safe space for students of AHAS KHS. And then the third is to prepare psychology students in attending and listening skills. So that is the brief introduction of what peer psychosocial support is about. Ah, I see. Well, that's a very, very lengthy answer. I, okay, so as, some, as a UI student, I only just know that the people who are there were trained to have special classes before they are, what do you call it? Before they are initiated. Before they conduct before, the session, yeah. Uh, before they conduct the session. Ah, I see. Okay, I actually went to one of those pure, psycholo pure psychosocial support. Okay, it's a favor to hey. a friend. <laughs> uh, so how is it? It was okay. I actually enjoyed my session. Uh, I think, but I forgot her name already. But it was it was, and it was a good session to have someone to talk to. Uh, brother Hakim. Okay, so we have heard about a little bit brave about the peer psychosocial uh, support is ease. So I believe that uh, when we talk about a psychosocial, it is involve the individuals, uh, talk and behavior itself. So uh, when you say that it has been conducted for fourth semester, I believe that during it has been initiated, it must have, like we say, the struggle behind it. So I can you a little bit share with us today about uh, the, uh, what we say that the story behind uh, of the peer psychosocial support itself, and also maybe you can share your view about the student mental health. Is it, it is something that topic that sh we should highlight at the tertiary education level? So yeah, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Hakim, for your question. All right. So in my point of view, I personally think that uh, many of us are actually suffering in silence. It may be due to um, tiny or even major issues. That is something that we cannot say for sure because it depends on the individual itself, right? So hence, I believe that um, the student's mental health is quite unstable, but it would be unfair for me to say that all of the students like that. But I am sure that some of the students are suffering from various mental health issues, including stress, uh, depression, anxiety, and etc. And of course, um, back to your question, is it an important um, is it an important topic to be highlighted? Yes, it is an important topic to be highlighted because. Um, ever since the pandemic, we can see that people are um, more, I would say that people are shocked of transition. Okay, let's talk in a student's perspective, true, like um, based on student, student's view. Um, people, as the students are quite shocked to the transition of from, from physical to online classes, right? So um, being at home, um, there are multiple um, responsibilities that you need to carry. Responsibility as a student, responsibility as a sister, as a daughter. So those transition from physical classes to online classes and do your classes at home, it, um, it happened to affect the students mentally as well because they need to juggle multiple things at once. So 
I believe that is one of the reason um why is the need of peer psychosocial support right uh, multiple multiple um what do you call multiple responsibilities and then um academic stress um I believe that um some of the lecturers might think um oh being at home we need to make the questions um how to add more um more assignments because um they are doing it online you know things like that so the adjustment um the adjustment of online classes may hard it may be hard even though it has been about two years now it is still actually hard and now when we are starting to become um at well adjusted with online and now we are transferring back to um going back to physical classes so again we're changing again so that causes instability amongst the student i believe so um due to various reasons i believe that not my not many students feel comfortable to talk about this matter due to being scared of judgment by the people and being claimed um, unhealthy or unfit sometimes but when some people start to discussing about mental health more openly eventually the students will start talk about it as well to start open up as well so if you ask me um why i would why do we need peer psychosocial support right because we know our friends when we we when we want to talk to someone they will include elements elements um because they know us because they will they will try to provide us with solution but when you're talking to someone that you don't know the conversation ends there and they will only listen to you and not try to provide with um solutions to your problem so that would be my point of view on it hope that answers your question hakim uh, yeah so it's actually uh actually like we can say that open our eyes about the issue of the mental health, student mental health itself and to have a medium like we say to allow the student to express their talk and we helping each other so i think that this initiative is actually a great stuff to do so I believe that this is something that should be continued also. So uh, for the sure. next questions, maybe Nukman can proceed with that. Okay, thank you, Brother Hakim. So uh, Wafa, so for our next question, so uh, put aside stress and mental breakdown, was there any other issue and concerns that urge the psychology unit to conduct the psychosocial support? Maybe there were students who are on the verge of, you know, suicide. Wala uh, wala. Were there any alarming issues that had put you guys to create this movement? Uh, actually, actually, um, at the very beginning, I would say that I am unsure. But when I started to become the person in charge for peer psychosocial support and looking at the registr uh, registration form. There are students who mention about um, suicidal thoughts um, and harming themselves, um, having um, sleeping, sleeping disorder, eating disorder, so things like that. And those are actually pretty serious issues. So um, hence my answer would be yes, it is an alarming issues and it has to it, the initiative has to be continued in order to help these students. I see. Oh yeah, but I think it's a good movement for you guys to help the students because you know with the pandemic, it actually burdens the mental for the students to face online classes, and also you know other, uh, what do you call it, issues that they silently have faced. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, okay, that Ah, sorry, Kim. Ah, uh, Kim, brother Kim. Okay, so ah. Uh, I noticed that uh, at the, the start of this webinar, we, you did share about like uh, where the student may find that it's hard for them to express their thought. So talking about that, I believe that there must be uh, underlying factors or the challenges that uh, lie behind them, like what had led to them to not feel like uh, to express their thought to share their problems with their colleagues or to meet the psychological psychology officer. So do, what do you think about that, 
are there any challenge or obstacle that you have been observed throughout the fourth semester that this initiative have been taken? So I believe that there must be something, a story to come out. Lah. Like we would say that there must be something that we could notice that has been led to students to find it's hard for them to talk about mental health. Even though uh, something, this is something that essential to line out and to find the solution for that. Because we believe that on every problem, there must be a solution. And there is, there is also about the mental health itself. So what do you say about that? All right. So I think um, I will start with the very, the very um, obvious um, underlying factor that we could see is actually scared of being judged. That is the, the main factor, I would say, because um, if I were to put my position, uh, myself in, the, in that position, um, I would think twice before um, sharing someone my mental health state so because um we tend to we tend to think too much about what people might think of us if um we talk about mental health issues or we share that um or um i'm suffering from um uh, some kind of mental health issues um maybe um the reason is because they are scared of um being seen as weak as unfit as unhealthy however that is not um i wouldn't say that is not true but that is not something that we should think of because um our life as a whole is a roller coaster right there are times where we are perfectly healthy but there are times also that we are not and we have to acknowledge that and um hence we need to um take into consideration to do things um, in order to help us to become better. So first I would say is scared of being judged. Um, and then second, um, when you are diagnosed about uh, when you are diagnosed with um, serious mental health issues, um, of course you are required to go some kind of professional treatment, right? And professional treatment, um, let's say outside of um, um, outside of um, the institution, uh, the university, outside of UIA, um, they are, you are required to pay for the treatments, for professional treatments. So, um, and it is not cheap. It's, for, let's take um, one session, uh, for example, one hour, one hour of, um, one hour of um, session with the um, certified psychologist or psychiatrist, it can go up to 150 ringgit, 200 ringgit um, per hour. So that's a lot of money for students. And that is also a reason why they, they do not see the need or they feel like it's, it's a burden for them to um, seek for professional treatment because it requires to pay some amount of money. Second, and third, um, I noticed that um, the students um, they applied, they registered um, to have session with our volunteers and then last minute they um, they uh, they did not respond to it. Um, there also some students who um, cancel the cancel the uh, cancel the session due to they see it as a commitment. They have to attend and they feel like um, oh because um, the volunteers is going to conduct the session, um, every week, once a week, they see it as a commitment, and they cannot, um, um, they cannot include include the session into their busy schedule because they see it as a commitment. However, this session is actually depending on the client, uh, on the students. If they want to have um one week, um, one per per week, once per week, um, and if the volunteers are free, then they can have the session once per week. But if not, if they only want um one session, uh, one session for every two weeks, it can be done that way also. So it's actually pretty flexible. However, um, they think that it's a commitment to them, and it's hard for them to um commute to it. Yeah. So I think that that is three um underlying factors that I could see. 
All right, so we have been clear about the three underlying factors that have been shared by the CISOWAPA. So I believe that the, the first factor is something that we couldn't run from it, from being judged from the people when we say that about we having a bad mental health. So people will tend to be talked about are we really having that? So to proceed to have or what we see a consultation with the respective uh, publics and also respective organization, I believe that is something that are cost me too. So there are things that I believe that has been uh, taken over by conducting an initiative like what peer psychosocial support have been done. It is something that we can say has wrapped up the factors which is the costly as well as it is tend to open for discussion that are not being judged freely. Uh, what we can say people are free to express their thought as well. So we actually uh, will go to the last question that might be come from Brother Nurman. Okay, thank you about that again. So, uh, well far, okay, so far, what action or plan has Malaysia or the Minister of Education has put uh, for the mental health, especially among students? In your opinion, do you think that our society, our Malaysian society, would be accept, would be ready to accept the stigma among about mental health? Can you give us your opinions and thoughts about this issue? All right. Um... That is quite a larger scale to discuss on, actually. But, um, okay, um, as for the government, I believe that ever since the case um, in relation with um, two, of UI, yeah, uh, two of UITM students last year, I think, I believe it was back in December or November like that, um, they have brought issues regarding men mental health amongst the students. Um, in the parliament. So when they brought this issue to the parliament, they have discussed about oh, what initiative that could be done. And I could say that um, there is one initiative um, where they deployed um, 150 counsellors to um, public universities. Um, I am not sure whether um, our university is one of them or not, but um, uh, I am sure, uh, but I am sure that 150 counselor has been deployed to um, multiple public universities to help with the students. And I would say that it is a good start. Um, and it shouldn't, this, um, this problem couldn't be catered only by the government. It has to, it has to come from um, the society as well. Um, it's not just the government job to um, to help um, raise awareness or to help students in um, mental uh, in um, combating mental health issues, but also it is the university responsible um, ourselves. And yes, I would say that the society the society will eventually meet the target to um, to confidently discuss about mental health issue and to combat this issue. However, it's going to take such a long time uh, for us to be perfectly stable. And also that um, it could only happen if everyone put their hands in that. And if it comes only from one side, for example, the, how do I say, it? let's give an example. If um, the government um, offer counsellor, but the students does not want to attend. So that is also one-sided. You know, so it doesn't it doesn't serve the purpose. So if everyone actually um starts um to be more cooperative in combating this issue, and it definitely can make it happen to ensure that our mental health being is well, inshallah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Sister Wafa, for your answer. Yeah, I really do hope that the stigma towards mental health, depression, anxiety would come to an end in Malaysia because for our people, talking about a thing is still a taboo. Maybe some people would really would associate such uh, mental health issues with religious, what do you call it, religious belief. Maybe they are not being religious enough. So that thing is actually wrong because mental health is mental health. You need to treat it professionally, not just religious. On the other, one, on the other hand, is good but you also need to seek other professional help to help you better with your own, you know, uh, demon inside your mind. Yeah, it has, it has to, we have to consider all perspective and 
try to um, work things around and not ignore one of the other. Yes, exactly. Brother Hakim? All right, so we have covered all the questions, but now like, uh, if any of you, the viewers now, have any questions to see Sawapa about regarding this peer psychosocial support or about the student mental health well-being, you may throw up and write up your questions at the chat box and we will write up. So if anyone have any questions, you can maybe... Maybe uh, any of the viewers want to know how to apply for the psychosocial support? If, the, if there is any slots or openings for this, you know, uh, towards the end of this semester, it's a very good experience. All right. Um, before someone asks, let me share. Um, um, we're actually close um, at the moment because, we, of course, we want our volunteers to um, focus on the exam and so is the students. But um, towards the beginning of the semester, later on, once the semester has started, um, once we have conducted our training session once again for the new semester, um, then we will, um, of course, um, share to the public that we are back um, opening for session. Oh, I see. So yeah, it makes sense now because everyone is busy towards the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. So but inshallah by the next semester, the physical one, inshallah, you the psychosocial support will will be ongoing. Yes. Okay. Later next semester. All right. Understood? Okay. Inshallah. Brother Hakim, do you have any more thoughts and opinions regarding the topic? Uh, uh, we have one question actually, basically from Hari Naim. So he stated that, Sister Wafa, can you share some tips on listening skill that might be useful for us as a normal student? As I actually uh, agree with that because we know that uh, listening and using your ears specifically an essential principle where we listen to the people it is one of the way we allow people to express anything that they have anything in mind so by listening precisely I believe that it's essential and crucial as us like we say open up a medium for them to mm -hmm. share their talk so what do you say about that all right thank you brother Hari for the question um, okay, when you're lending your ears to someone, right? Um, try to put ourselves in their position. When you're talking to someone, you want to be heard, right? So how can you how can you know that whether they are listening attentive, attentively to us or not? Is first eye contact. Um, try to uh, not be too distracted with other things around you and focus on them. So first, pay attention to them, and then second is. Do not try to provide solution when they are, are sharing with you because some some um some students or okay um for, for as normal students um you ask uh, let's put as um, we're talking to our friends right um they actually just want us to listen so perhaps what you could do is you repeat back and summarize what they are feeling and acknowledge their feeling and try not to um, provide them with solution or I think you should do this, this, that. No, we don't do that. We shouldn't try to provide them with solution, but acknowledge their feelings and ensure that their feelings is valid. Um, okay, eye contact. Um, and then um, pay attention and acknowledge their feelings. And also your body language. Your body language says a lot. Um, says a lot as well because, um, for example, we're talking to someone and then we do the finger thingy like like that, right? It says that oh, you know, um, oh, they think that we took so much time. So that is also um, body language is also something that we need to work on when listening to um others. Mm, what else? Mm. Try not to not to um check your phone when you when you're listening to someone because uh, that's just that you're not in interested in what they say and um it might tell them that their feelings is not valid they, they, they could and um when someone feels like they are not listened to they will scared to open up the next time and not just to you to others as well it will be like oh the last time i talked to wafa she didn't even pay attention she didn't even look at me 
why should I talk to others? Because others might think that, um, oh, I'm not making any sense. This is just a small matter, uh, things like that. So um, when listening to others, we really need to pay attention to them, uh, control our eye contact, our body language, and um, acknowledge their feeling as much as we can. All right. I hope that answers your question, Brother Hari. There is actually uh, an insight, uh, what we say, the sharing from Sister Wafa. I believe that it's a hope that we all of us here will uh, try to improve our listening skills uh, and as well as like we perhaps we can do better for someone who might need help, who might need us to be there. As we can see that everyone uh, matters, every problem, even though it's small or big, everyone uh, should have given an opportunity to be heard and also to know they are having someone that can be relied on. So I believe that it actually has, uh, what we say, our webinar has come to the end. And so, so I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining us for today, as well as it is a great to have Sister Wafa, who actually is the chairperson of the section of psychology, to share about the peer psychosocial support. And I really hope that everyone could take what we can say benefit and a little bit knowledge to apply uh, at the end of these, uh, why we say throughout your life, as well as to support ourselves and also our friends who might need uh, our help. So I believe that uh, this is actually a good sharing, as well as have open my eyes about the idea of having a peer psychosocial support. So if no one have anything to say before we end our sessions. Uh, I don't have anything to say. I just want to thank you for Sister Wafa for her time and for her knowledge that she shared to us. This uh, webinar has been an eye opener to me as well. And it has, and I hope that I could benefit from uh, the points that she has been sharing with us about psychology and listening and how we should just idea about their problems thank you thank you for having me as well i hope i hope um i answered all of your questions you One. did <laughs> very a plus <laughs> it is a good show um, also if like anyone has any question you can also reach us via our instagram peer psychosocial support iium all right yeah. okay. Everyone should take this, uh, what we say, make benefit of your peer psychosocial support. So I really wish everyone have a good day ahead and also good luck for your final examination and have a good rest, everyone, before we started a new semester. Thank you and assalamualaikum, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, too. All right. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Bye-bye. Waalaikumsalam.